Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan Alexander. I am lab manager and instructor um, for the automation engineering program here at Lorain County Community College. Um, so today I'm gonna give you guys a tour of our automation classroom and labs. Um, so we have a, a set number of courses here that we teach uh, that are core to the program. Uh, so we have our industrial robotics class, our PLC class, PLC2 class, work cell interfacing, and our capstone class as well. Um, there's also other courses that are supporting, but in here we teach those main automation classes. Uh, so industrial uh, robotics, they'll learn how to program a six axis robot. Um, so not only how to program it, but also how to set it up. Um, in PLC 1, they learn how to program a programmable logic controller, which is pretty much a specialized um, industrial computer that is the brains of a manufacturing cell. And you can see one um, right over here um, in the one trainer. So this uh, is the PLC. Um, so they learn how to set this up and also program it. And so again, that is the brains of your manufacturing cell. So it tells what everything to do. It reads the inputs and outputs. Um, and then in our PLC2 class, um, they learn about um, HMIs, which is a human machine interface, um, which is this guy right here. Um, this allows a operator or a person to interact with the machine, so it gives them feedback and also allows them to change some settings and get some cycle times and other information back. Um, also, they learn how to do networking, so they learn how to network the devices together on like an Ethernet uh, network and um, so forth. So they learn the um, topics behind that, how to configure it, set it all up. Uh, the last topic in that class is they learn about motion control, um, so they'll learn how to program um, using motion commands in the PLC. Um, and then at the very end of the class, they kind of tie all that together, um, kind of like a miniature capstone class uh, project to then tie all those topics together. Um, and then we have work cell interfacing. So in that class, they learn how to uh, wire and set up the communications between all these peripheral devices and automation cells. So your sensors, uh, network IO, um, robot to robot communications, robot to PLC communications. So they learn how to set all that up and integrate it into one system. Um, so they'll learn how to you know, wire these various sensors up, um, they'll learn how to wire uh, relays, they'll learn how to wire the PLCs, um, and so forth. Um, as you guys see on the table here, we have uh, quite a few trainers. Uh, the neat thing about these is we've designed and specified and built these in-house here at the college. Um, the reason why we did that is because one, um, kind of the cost. Um, one PLC trainer from Allen Bradley was around $30,000. Um, we were able to build our PLC trainers for about a tenth of the cost, for about $3,500. Uh, so that really um, saved us some money, but also enabled us now to give a trainer to each student. Because uh, before we would have two students per trainer, um, and we found they weren't learning the topics as good. So with them now being able to use a trainer one-on-one, -on -one, um, they get more proficient at it, and we see better results at the end of the class. Um, in the back of the room there, you can kind of see those red trainers. Those were the old ones. Uh, so these ones on the table have replaced it. Um, some of the issues with our old ones is students would kind of hide behind them. So that's why we really kept these nice and um, low. Um, also, uh, this motion trainer was built in house as well. Um, so we 3D printed our adapter plates. We've cut adapter plates on the water jet. Um, there's very um, many, there's a lot of 3D printed parts on here. Um, so we're utilizing all our um, labs and this uh, technology we have here on campus. Um, so PLC 1 class, they'll use this trainer specifically. Um, in the PLC 2 class and our work cell classes, they'll be using this trainer. Uh, this is called our work cell trainer. Um, so it has additional equipment on there for learning how to wire electrical mechanical relays, um, power, and other ports. On the front of this trainer, we have a um, networked um, I.O. distributed block, so they'll learn how to remote into this to get I.O. back to talk to the main PLC. Um, also, um, in the PLC2 class, they'll learn how to use these remote I.O. blocks. Um, so it's a really good uh, program. And we're utilizing all of the current technology that's out there. Um, so that's kind of our PLC classes and our work cell classes. Um, in the robotics class, um, we teach on the robots that you can see moving in the background there. Those are our cert carts. Um, in addition to those, we also have these uh, teach pendants at each of the stations. Um, so the neat thing about these is these are the same teach pendants that are found on the actual robots over there. Um, it's just now instead of interfacing with the robot, they're interfacing with the software on the computer. And the software is made by Fanuc, so the same manufacturer of the robot. 
Um, it's utilizing the same programming language, uh, the same everything. So you could program on here on the computer and then transfer it to the robot and robot and back. Um, so the neat thing about this software is you can do offline programming. You can also kind of like a digital twin of your system. So we can go through here and program the robot cell and the robot beforehand and then transfer it out there. So it really allows us to uh, check it for errors and make sure it's all gonna work. Um, so if we walk over here, I'll show you guys um, some of the technology we have for the robots. This is uh, the CERT cart. Um, you'll notice we have some different equipment laying out here. Um, we are able to do uh, vision with the robots. Um, so with the vision systems, we can kind of, um, the, it gives the robot kind of eyes to see around itself. So now we can uh, take a picture of a part and see where it's located and then go pick it up. So it allows it to navigate. Um, this is a neat system right here. Uh, this is a recognition robotics brand of vision system. Uh, they were a startup, com they're a startup company here on the campus. Um, so what they have is a, just a regular 2D industrial camera. And from that 2D camera, they can help the robot to navigate in all six of its axes. Um, so it's a pretty neat technology. Um, they also have a laser um, vision system. So it puts down a laser line and they can get the profile of the part as well. It's a very neat um, technology. So we are able to use those with these robots. Uh, we also have Fanix IR Vision as well, um, which comes with the CERT carts. Um, with these guys, we've kind of modified them a little bit. We've added quick change tooling to the cert cart, so now we can switch between different grippers. And the reason why we want to switch between different grippers is because in the classes, we could have different um, projects or something like that. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, but anyways, yep, um, this has to be uh, still modified, so we're still finishing it up. But this will allow us to switch between different projects and allow students to um, get different skills using different tooling and stuff like that. Um, these guys right here aren't necessarily going to be used on the cert carts, uh, but they're more for our larger system that you guys will see in a little bit out in our sim lab. Uh, so this is a deburring tool and this is a finishing tool. So a finishing tool we can use for like cleaning up welds, uh, maybe polishing a part, you can put a wire brush, um, you know, stuff like that. A sanding um, disc. Uh, what is this guy? This guy uses burrs, so it's for deburring the edges of parts. So putting a little chamfer on it, taking the sharp edges off. Um, and so forth. Um, the neat thing about these cert carts is they're the lowest level of collaboration you can get with the robot. So what I mean by that is if you get too close to the robot, it's just gonna pause. And as I step away, it's going to resume where it left off. Um, so again, that's the lowest level of collaboration you can have with the robot. Uh, they have ones that are higher, so they have more technology integrated into them. So they would have force sensing in the arms, that way if you got too close or if it hit you, it would just stop. And they run at much lower speeds. Uh, so how this works is there's a laser scanner underneath the cart here. Um, and so as you get close to it, it's going to pick you up. And as you get further away, it's going to sense that you're further away. So then it's just going to resume. Um, in conjunction with that laser sensor, it uses uh, DCS, dual check safety software. That allows you to limit its speed and position. So using those two together allows us to have that as a fenceless cart. Um, so again, these will be used in the intro robotics course and our other courses um, to teach students how to program and set up the industrial robots. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about our program um, and the classes we have and the technology we use in those classes. Um, we also, in the program, uh, implemented um, Earn and Learn, which allows us um, to have the student come to classes two days a week. And then the rest of the week, um, they are working with a local manufacturer gaining uh, real world work experiences and uh, just good knowledge and applying what they're learning in the classroom to actual field work. Um, so that's a very good program that we have. Um, on the board behind me, you can see a simulation of the line that we'll, have, that we'll be going out to look at here shortly. Um, that was created in that same software, uh, RoboGuide. Uh, so students also learn a little bit about that as well. To the left of that, you'll see some companies up on the board. Uh, those are companies um, that we're currently working with or uh, working on getting partnerships with or where students are currently working at. So we do a number of different types of programs. We have public training, we have apprenticeship programs for uh, local companies. Um, so we have a lot of uh, stuff to offer here as well. So uh, now we're going to transition into the sim lab here. Um, I'll give you guys a tour of that. Uh, that houses all of our industrial equipment. About two years ago, uh, Dean Kelly tasked Scott Zytek, the program coordinator, and us to kind of uh, specify and create a system, a manufacturing system that could manufacture almost anything. Uh, so we can't really do everything here, but we can do quite a bit. 
Um, so what you see behind me is the digital manufacturing line. Um, so with a lot of work, hard work uh, between me and Scott and a lot of time and planning, uh, we came up with this. Um, so it's a pretty neat system. Um, it has a lot of technologies integrated into it. Um, our purposes for this is to, one, uh, train our students on the state of the industry technology and some of the state of the art technology, stuff that they're gonna see when they go out into the field. Um, we also wanted to help our small and medium sized manufacturers. Uh, so we wanna help them to um, utilize newer technology, get trained on it, and see how they could implement it into their processes so they can stay competitive and also um, grow and continue to expand. So um, the neat thing about this system compared to our old one as our old one was very um, time consuming to switch over, um, it was very, uh, it took almost a whole semester just to switch between a process, a project. So with this system, we integrated a lot of the newer technology such as networking, and we have quick change tooling on the robots, and just the newer software and stuff enables us to now switch over between projects very rapidly and very easily. Um, so we can go from working with local manufacturers in the daytime to working with students in the evening time. Um, so as I mentioned before, everything's pretty much networked. Again, that allows us to quickly switch between stuff. So instead of having a bunch of hardware, hardwired I.O., everything is communicating over a single Ethernet cable. Um, the robots have quick change tooling, which I will demonstrate that for you guys in a little while. Um, so uh, the first thing I kind of want to go over um, is our CNC machine. Uh, this is a FANUC RoboDrill. Um, it's your standard three-axis uh, milling machine, but we also have a trunnion in there. Uh, the trunnion is this guy right here. Uh, that will allow us to also rotate a part now um, so we can uh, machine in different angles. Um, we have an example part somewhere around here. Let me grab it for you guys. So this um, is the part that is actually being machined in the uh, CNC. Uh, so we designed this in-house, um, and then we had the integrator uh, put it into the machine for us, our program into the machine, I should say, and set it up. Uh, so it's a notepad pen holder, so you can stick a notepad in there and a pen, and you have a spot for a nameplate on the back. Uh, so that is what the machine, so the finished part would just be sitting in there. Um, and then the robot that you see kind of behind me would tend uh, the CNC, so it would pick the part out and also place it. Um, we have a couple other features on this machine. Uh, right here you can stay, see this is our um, workpiece probe, so we can probe the parts, make sure it's in the right spot, and then it's also the right dimensions. Um, kind of back there behind the trunnion, you, can't, you can barely see it, uh, but we have a laser-based tool probe so we can take a tool and check to see if it's the right length, is it chipped, broke, etc. Uh, so it's a pretty neat machine. Um, there's a lot of capabilities you can do with this. There's a lot of um, openness to the machine, so you can add a lot of those newer technologies such as RFID uh, barcodes for the tool holder so you know which tool is in there and so forth. Um, right here, this is just the fixture so we'll load parts onto there, and the robot will pick from there to place them in the CNC machine. Um, here, this is uh, kind of your standard industrial cabinet. Um, we utilize Allen Bradley panel views uh, for the HMIs, again, human machine interface. That allows us to interface with the system. So you can see here we have a bunch of status um, coming back from the system. Um, you can see the robot's inputs and outputs. Um, you know where it's at. Um, here you can just kind of see the general um, overview for this part of the system. Um, this is the robot controller down here. Again, that's what's controlling the robot. Um, inside the cabinet, we have an Allen Bradley PLC. Um, we have the 5069 um, L310s. They're newer uh, compact logics. It's all the industry spec. So what you see here is what you'll see in industry. It's the same type of equipment. Um, the safety is actually also done over the network as well. Uh, so it's pretty, um, you know, using the current technology. Um, so with the safety here, we have obviously a wide open spot here, but we're utilizing these light curtains to protect the cell. Um, that enables us to get a better view of the system. Um, also on the robots you see there, that's a tooled stand, so that's holding our extra tools, so we can switch between those as the uh, project is going. Um, right now you'll see the robots kind of moving uh, behind me. Right now they're just showing off. Um, we're constantly wanting to add new features and new programs to the cell um, so we can continue to show off what its capabilities are. Um, right over here you'll see a, uh, what we call our fixture tables or workstation. Uh, so that's where we can house parts to be picked or parts that have to be worked on. 
Um, so currently we're modifying the system to be able to place the pen and notepad in that notepad pen holder I showed you earlier. Um, you'll also notice on the bottom of the table there, uh, we have a um, ethernet based solenoid valve. So over a single ethernet cable, we can control all seven of those solenoids and also eight inputs and eight outputs. So that's pretty neat. So instead of having to wire each one of those independently back to the cabinet, they can all be communicated to over ethernet. Um, again, that's what's going to enable us to quickly switch between jobs is because instead of doing all a bunch of hardware stuff, we can switch everything over to software. Um, you notice on the back of the robots, they have solenoids uh, valves as well. That's to control their end of arm tooling. Um, you'll notice if I step in here, uh, the robots will stop and that again, it's because of the safety. So that's the white curtains. I tripped those and that caused the robots to stop. Um, you also saw that the robot on the back was traveling back and forth. Is mounted on a linear axis uh, on robot transfer unit RTU. That enables the robot to have uh, more work envelope. Um, it, you know, it gives it more flexibility to tend more machines and reach more of the work cell instead of just a stationary robot behind you there. Um, so, kind of a little bit of a detour here. Um, this machine is uh, what we call our water jet uh, cutter. Um, it's a very neat machine. Um, so, it utilizes high pressure water, which your pressure jet. Your pressure washer is about, what, 2,000 PSI. This is running about 45,000 PSI. So it's a very high stream of water, pressure, very high pressure stream of water. Um, it also utilizes a garnet mixed in with that. Um, the combination of the two is what allows it to cut through various materials. So we can cut through uh, metal, steel, titanium, uh, composites, acrylic, um, fiberglass. There's all sorts you can cut through. Um, down here, you can kind of see this is an example of a tool steel. Um, our welding department needs it to do practice welds on. Um, and so they were trying to cut it with their chop saw. They got through maybe a quarter inch and a half hour. Uh, with the water jet, we're able to cut through it in three minutes. So it's a real time saver. Uh, the other neat thing about it is unlike like a uh, laser cutter or a plasma cutter, if you're trying to cut parts and keep them from warping, this will not heat up your parts. So it won't change those part properties or anything like that. Um, so again, it's a really neat machine. Um, it's kind of expensive to run. There's a lot of consumables involved with it, uh, from the filters to the garnet. Um, so we really want our local manufacturers to come try it out, see if it's going to work for them, and then they can you know, go from there and see if they want to invest in it. Or they can come here and prototype with it. They can do test runs and cut parts, which we've had several companies already do. We've cut um, stainless steel, uh, various stainless steel parts uh, for various projects from motorcycle prototype parts to uh, water treatment uh, sensor disc. So a lot of neat stuff with that machine. Um, kind of behind that, we have another CNC machine. Um, it's kind of our standalone machine. So companies can come in, utilize it, uh, use it to run projects, prototypes, and so forth. It's kind of, the reason why it's set aside is because um, if that's being utilized for a class or a training, we don't want to have to tie them both up. Um, so as we walk over here, um, right here you'll see this is our um, another HMI screen, um, but it's being seed into the system. Uh, what this is being used for is just to give uh, status back from the system. So you can't really change anything from here, but you can see everything that's going on. So the neat thing about this is um, with Industry 4.0, it's really about the data and getting stuff back and using that to optimize your system. So this is one part of that, is getting that data back, seeing how it's working, you know, getting feedback. And from there, we can go in and modify or optimize the system. Um, so again, as you see, you can drill down into these. You can get all the feedback from that system. Um, you can get to production data, um, which we don't really have a lot of right now. Um, and you can get different statuses as well. So as we go along, we're always wanting to upgrade the system and keep adding more of that Industry 4.0 technology. Um, so we're going to be adding RFID systems so we can track parts, uh, barcode readers. Um, each of the robots can have a vision system attached to them so we can, again, uh, have the robot navigate and find parts. Um, again, it will offset in all six of its axes. So say we have a part just flown down the conveyor, it's not fixtured. The robot could take a picture of it and then know exactly where it's at and then go pick it up. Um, we have a lot of options on these robots from line tracking to remote tool center points, uh, vision and so forth. Um, so it's pretty neat. Um, here you can get a better view of the rail unit for the robot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate a tool change for you guys. So I'm going to switch this um, into manual mode and then I'm going to tell it to 
hang on one sec. So what happened was, is when I went over there, I tripped the safety system. And so by doing that, I've shut down the whole system. So what I have to go do now is just go reset that light curve. So kind of a good example. So it can only be reset um, if the operator or whoever's using the system has this key. Um, it's part of the safety because you don't want anyone to be able to reset it unless everyone's clear of the system and it's safe to do so. Um, so always before you reset, you always want to make sure there's no one in the line. So I'll walk back over here. So I will um, demonstrate that tool change for you guys. So I just have to um, make sure it's out of uh, auto mode right now. And then once I do that, we can switch to the uh, back. So right now it's got tool two on it. So as you'll see, it's going to um, travel over to the tool stand and you can kind of see the operation of the rail unit as well, how it's sliding down. So that is, normally these robots are only six axis, uh, but this has an extra one. So it's considered seven axes. Um, so it's automatically recorded. Whenever you record a position, it also includes that axis. Um, so what you're seeing now is the robot's gonna drop off one of its tools. So these are uh, pneumatically operated. Um, there is sensors in there to tell if it's locked or unlocked, so it keeps track. Um, so from there, I'm gonna tell it to pick tool one. Um, so you can kind of see the flexibility that we gain from this. So it's gonna really allow us to switch between different projects. Now we can go from a three jaw gripper to pick up round parts to a two jaw to pick up more square parts. Or we can switch to vacuum tooling or one of those deburring or finishing tools I showed you guys in another lab. Uh, so it's a really neat um, technology to have. Um, so we're in the process of getting a 450 watt CO2 laser system that will be on this part of the line over there. That will, this robot will be the one that will be tending it. So again, that's uh, part of our continually upgrading this system. Uh, that will now label us to cut um, sheet metal, acrylic, cardboard, various materials. Um, so that's a pretty neat system that we're looking forward to having integrated. Um, the other technology that we have in here is this Lincoln Electric weld cell. Um, so inside of here, um, we have a FANUC uh, robot with a welding torch on the end of it. So this will enable us to weld uh, parts as well. Um, the reason why the back is kind of open and some of it's a little apart is because we're currently um, making a um, automated door on the back of the system so the robot on the rail can tend it so it can drop parts off and then take finished parts away. Um, so that's why I kind of mentioned the laser cell, the laser cutting system as well, is because now we'll be able to take and cut uh, sheet metal parts and then we can bring them in here and weld them so we have a complete process there. Um, so that is that uh, one of the other technologies um, that we have. Um, so again, we just have our standard um, cabinet and are also our teach minutes. So again, these teach minutes is what controls the robots. Um, so that's the digital manufacturing line. Um, again, um, you know, we really wanted to use it to train our students on the latest technology. So when they leave here, they have a good understanding of how to put this stuff together and how to make an integrated system. And also being able to work with those local and manufacture, local small and medium sized manufacturers. Um, in addition to that, I uh, just remembered is we intentionally left some bigger spaces in the line so a company could bring in their specialized piece of equipment or just their standard equipment that they want to integrate and see maybe how it would work with a robot or a system like this. So it's really flexible. Um, it's a really neat system. We're always wanting to upgrade it and um, being able to just continually um, produce uh, well-qualified students. Um, so that's going to wrap up the tour for the uh, SimLab.